I was given basically an hour and a half to vacate the property on my 18th birthday. And I ended up sleeping in a doorway of a shop to keep out the wind and cold. So I've slept in public bathrooms, train station lifts, park benches. I think I cried myself to sleep that night. T entered the foster care system when she was four months old. When she came of age, the state stopped supporting her. I've spent basically more time in care than I have out of care in my first 18 years of life. In that time, she was fostered by multiple different carers, including kinship, and had stints in residential and psychiatric care. Turbulent would be how I describe my childhood. Sometimes things were good and then everything came crashing down. I guess I felt alone. The placements T had and the care, particularly the stints in emergency and residential care, didn't adequately address the trauma she had developed. They don't have the like training and knowledge and know-how to deal with onset of trauma, as like traumatic symptoms, uh, post-traumatic stress, complex trauma, like triggers, whatnot. We often used to think of children at risk and children in out-of-home care as naughty kids, kids who are behaving badly. Uh, now we understand that a lot of those extreme behaviours are actually responses to trauma. If you give children half a shot at starting to heal and process trauma, if you just give them enough relational stability, the vast majority of children do something incredible. They can rewire their brains and believe in relationships again. Jared Wheatley has been working in the sector for 15 years. He's leading an innovative foster care scheme in Australia. It's had success in Germany and now he's seeing those sorts of results in New South Wales. The professional individualised care model, or PIC, has psychologists and other therapeutic professionals give up their day job to become full-time foster parents. What that means for the child is they've actually got someone who can appropriately respond to complex trauma and attachment needs, but most significantly, they have someone that can offer them a real relationship. Jared is optimistic about the outcomes. Currently, we have an 85% success rate in keeping children out of residential and psychiatric facilities. The professional model targets kids housed in motels and group homes. High needs kids can cost the state more than a million dollars a year. By comparison, the ABC understands the professional model costs about $270,000 a year. So it's huge savings actually in the immediate term and even larger savings if you were to look at the downstream consequences of us not getting care right. Jared would like to see the program expanded in Australia. Kids raised in institutions end up in institutions. Um, we're trying to be, you know, an alternative to that. How lovely is it? Brett Peter is a caregiver in the program. By the time kids have come to Brett, they could have spent months living in motels or emergency care. The kids that have come in my care have felt unsafe and unloved and unwanted and their needs haven't been met. Several years ago, he met a young boy of nine named Leroy. Fearing for his future, Brett and his wife took him in as their own. Hey, do you want to get the winch and I'll bring the boat in? Yeah. Legend. I was very troubled. I was very troubled and it wasn't easy. It actually wasn't too bad. Kids suffer a lot of abandonment um, and when they, when they are, are moving too much and being, you know, 
placed here, placed there. I think shifting around, having too many faces, it just, it just starts to, start to desensitise the kid a bit. Brett's deep understanding of children's responses to damaging experiences informed the way he cared for Leroy and the boys he's fostered through the PIC model. Compared to the models that I've, I've been through, um, definitely more effective. As a Tiwi Islands man, maintaining that link was important for Leroy. He encouraged and supported my identity or like, you know, my culture. I ultimately want to be up there and be with my family, on my country, and especially just help the young people. For T, her drive also remains strong. I was labelled as that person that wasn't going to go far in life. So I guess I kind of used that to fuel me in a motivation. As my motivation to prove them wrong and to prove to myself that I am more than that.